So that is how <laughs> this dating yeah, changes nowadays. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And very good, uh, very good afternoon eh, to everybody. And my name is Muhammad Saidi Lamdi and I'm a uh, managing director of CX Green Bee Solutions in Bahar. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, building commissionings. And uh, well, uh, Ashri has been talking about uh, building commissioning for many years. And uh, it got nothing to do with green buildings on the very first place. And uh, green buildings come as an addition to the uh, building commissioning's uh, applications, actually. And uh, ASHRAE is coming out with the guidelines on the ASHRAE guidelines uh, for commissionings. It's actually guideline 0 to 0 5, the commissioning process. Guideline 0 presents the basic general processes involved with the commissioning new construction from pre design, design, construction, turnover, ongoing operation. Additional discipline specific guidelines are in the process of development by ASHRAE and others. Uh, I think it's a good uh, opportunity today for me to talk about this and uh, actually it's a, quite a new field in Malaysia. Uh, we have a construction industry has been, uh, the country has been built by all those engineers, CNS, and many architects. Yeah? And uh, they are actually responding this uh, to the building owners. But uh, over here we have another, another function yeah, that actually bring everybody together, which I'm going to highlight today, and which actually has been clearly uh, indicated in the guideline. Uh, another guideline uh, uh, done by ASHRAE in 2000, 2007 is on the HBAC, and our references, uh, net references is actually NEBB. NEBB is a uh, non government or government organization in the United States that actually look into uh, procedure standard for application for a lot of uh, uh, building commissioning, testing, validations, in rooms, everything, and one of it is actually commissioning. And they come up with a proper training on these things to certify building commissioners, and uh, they come up with their own procedure standard to go for whole building, but still. Uh, uh, Related and referred to as a standard. Well, actually, this presentation takes a uh, proper training, it's around like more seven days, and uh, you have exams every day. And a uh, and, uh, short course over this thing is a one whole day. So I try to actually bring down this thing to 45 minutes or less in the time. There's a time that I need, so please bear with me. Okay, let's go into definitions. I put a lot of definitions because I think it's a lot of introduction here. The commissioning process is quality-oriented process for achieving, verifying, documenting that the performance of facility system and assemblies meets defined objective and criteria. This is the definition in each way. So, uh, the process is performed specifically to ensure that the finished facility operates in accordance with the owner documented project requirements and construction documents. And uh, it begins in pre-design, not even design stage, it is a stage of uh, pre-design, and continues to design construction and occupancy of the facility. And uh, I think we're all very knowledgeable about when they do commissioning nowadays, it's like at the end of the project. Yeah? So, so this is a totally uh, new school of thought. And uh, other than commissioning, we have recommissioning. Yeah? Uh, definition of recommissioning is an application of the commissioning process requirements to a project that has been delivered using, using the commissioning process. This may be an ongoing, uh, this may be a schedule of recommissioning developed as part of an ongoing commissioning process, or it may be triggered by use change, operation problems, or other needs. Retro commissioning. The commissioning process applied to an existing facility that was not properly commissioned before. This presentation does not specifically address retro commissioning. However, the same basic principles they apply. So, re and retro commissioning, what actually distinguish both of these, eh? 
both facilities involve commissioning of existing facilities. Commissioning and existing facilities will most likely involve a combination of pre-commissioning and retro-commissioning. Therefore, the difference is not really much of concern because there are systems that have been commissioned before but not fully commissioned. You want to do it again. Owner's uh, project requirements. All right. I'll just go through this uh, definition and then we, we will come together later on. Because, uh, uh, well, in Malaysia, I think when I notice when we get hospitals, so they have a uh, hospital design brief, and something like that. It's uh, no one less equivalent to owner's project requirement defined in the United States and the trade. So it clearly stated a, re a written document that details the functional requirements of the project and the expectation of how it's going to use and operate, how it's going to work. These include project goals, measurable performance criteria, costs, benchmarks, success criteria, and supporting information. Basis of design. A document that records the concepts, calculation, decision, and product selection used to meet the owner project requirements and to satisfy applicable regulatory requirements, standards, and guidelines. The documents include both narrative description and list of items that support the design process. A commissioning plan. A document that outlines the organization, schedule, allocation of resources, and documentation requirements of the commissioning process. And uh, all right. And uh, another uh, definition on HRA is actually a commissioning authority, an entity identified by the owner who leads, plans, schedules, and coordinates the commissioning team to implement the commissioning process. Uh, we have other names for this, and uh, they call it also commissioning agent, commissioning provider, consultant, and I think in Malaysia we call it GPI, commissioning specialist. So my. Uh, after this, I'm going to refer to as a commissioning specialist. The difference between a new building and existing building commissioning is that new building for new construction uh, begin during pre-design, continue through construction and the transaction to owner operation. Right? I start to bring in everything together just to make sense. Huh? Other than owner and commissioning specialists, the design professional and contractor are fully included in the process. The commissioning specialist is involved and significantly influence the OPR, owner project requirements. Pre-design, uh, during pre-design, involved throughout the several design phases, significantly influence design details and construction documents leading to contractors building a fully commissionable facility. Existing building commissioning. Commissioning and existing building begin sometime after a building being constructed and placed in service. Usually, no design professionals, no contractor who got involved with the previous during construction period is, is there anymore. May not be any procedure or documentation available uh, from the original process commissioning or yeah, I think this kind of familiar situation has been and need to be belatedly uh, develop the OPR. We need to develop back the OPR, the probable BOD, a commissioning plan, a communication plan, and all test procedures. Perform all of the activities normally done with and by others during the pre-design stage several uh, design phase and construction period. The owner operation staff should be fully involved with the commissioning process. Purpose of building commissioning is the basic purpose of building commissioning is to provide a quality-based process with the committed com confirmation that building systems are planned, designed, installed, tested, operated, and maintained in compliance with the OPR. Commissioning of existing system may require the development of new functional type criteria in order to address the owner current system performance requirements. Why is needed? Project quality, energy environment, and energy and environment operations and maintenance, occupants, owner, image, verification of OPR, health, safety, and indoor air quality, peace of mind, energy conservation, performance, increased system complexity. Comfort control, I can go on. And uh, so I'm going to uh, 
uh, shipping one by one to justify that. And ultimately, it's a quality program assurance to the owner. Who owns the building? So this is a quality assurance process. That is the most compelling reason to include building commission in new construction projects. The pre-design phase output is enhanced by improved definition of owner project requirement for quality and performance which will guide the project throughout. The design phase, the output, big document, tender document is enhanced by the clear understanding of the owner project requirements and by the commissioning review. You can, uh, I believe most of you guys have been involved with the construction side. Eh? You can see that sometimes within one year, not even finish the warranty period, there's a lot of modification that side which suits the owner, uh, the user, uh, uh, usage of the buildings. It's indicating something. Eh? That is actually we are really trying to get rid of. Eh? That actually, Somebody need to be responsible and take very seriously what producing the policy yeah. you will actually have in, yeah. in deciding ways to go and really get it. Construction phase output a fully functional facility benefit from superior bid documents. Better construction, planning, scheduling, fewer change orders, effective training and system manual, systematic evaluation and testing of components up system, systems, and inter-system performance. This is very important. You know that. Everybody knows that. But who is actually all this why that is really fully true into this? Uh, participation of uh, commissioning specialists and objective independent third party representing the owner normally should be hired by the owner, not the turnkey contractor. Who is continuously evaluating concept, decision, and performance during all phases of project development, unwavering with regard to the OPR leads to the high quality result of a facility that performs fully in accordance with the OPR and relatively easy to be maintained. For project management, basically, and at design, design phase, and inadequate pre design phase often leads to inadequate and inappropriate design consideration, hence, inadequate design solutions during the design phase. Often projects go out for bids before the construction documents have been properly completed and competently reviewed. To ensure performance achievement as per OPR. This avoids the common scenario which projects are turned over to owners with untested or semi-tested an uncoordinated system that will take many years for the owner staff to finally resolve it. We have a uh, installation, my own experience, for the, for the, for the sizing of the condensation for the air handlers and for the and uh, this has been actually overlooked by many people. Uh, the requirement for you, for condensation is being regulated. And uh, you can find the sizing is not there. And uh, for your information, for example, training under this uh, system, the first time I saw the chart, the sizing chart for the organization. Because they identified the area that we eventually added to the design to solve the problem of blockage of green pen of the This is a true uh, maintenance issue and uh, of the commission. Building commissioning enhances project management by incorporating highly refined procedures for validating decisions, achievements, and system in a timely manner. The likelihood of the project being completed on the budget on schedule is enhanced by a properly executed commission program. Sustainable maintenance. The commissioning process assures that operation and maintenance staff have been provided with proper tools, useful documentation, and effective training to effectively operate and maintain the facility. Successful preparation of the M4 and MN staff yields prolonged persistence of the high performance achieved prior to occupancy. The commissioning process verifies and appropriate skilled technicians provide training using the training material to increase the success of knowledge and skill transfer, valuable documentation of performance benchmark and the written process to reissue future 